as you've probably noticed already, splines aren't super useful unless you use them in conjunction with modifiers. You can see these already have modifiers on them. Let's delete these real quick. Show you some of the important modifiers that we use with splines in order to create solid objects. So say you want to create a vase. There's not really a standard primitive for that unless it's an exact teapot like that, but that doesn't really count. Um, say we wanted to create a vase with a unique profile. So there's no standard primitive to it. You could polymodel it, but we don't know how to do that yet. Um, but what you can do is take a spline and make kind of a, a section cut of that vase that you want to make. And then, let's see, I'll use some of my tools. So refine, M for refine. You can either set up a hotkey or you can just click it. We'll take that, we refined it there and we took that. And let's turn this into a, a bezier. And then we'll take these handles, these are called handles, and we'll adjust that curve so that it's nice and smooth like that, maybe. Okay, so we have kind of the profile of our vase. Another important tool with splines that I didn't show you in the last video and probably should have. If you, if you select an entire spline, and if you're in spline mode, then you can go to outline here. And if you click on that, you can either type in an exact measurement for how much you want to outline, or you can just click and drag, and you can see how that kind of makes gives that line a thickness. Now, the modifier we want to use, and actually this vase isn't even going to hold water for the way I've made it, but it'll it'll give us it'll show us the point I'm trying to make. So if we go out of this sub-object mode now, just let's just select that line and go into the modifier list here, the modifier stack. Um, now the, the modifier I want to show you is lathe. You'll see what that does, it kind of rotates that, that profile around a certain point. Again, we want to get in and adjust this, this modifier, so if you hit the plus and go into the sub-object, selection here. Now what we're doing is adjusting that axis, adjusting the axis that that was rotating around. So you see as I drag it, now you can kind of see our vase. So as you bring the axis further and further out, it gets a wider and wider lathe. If you bring it in tight like this, it kind of creates a nice little vase. So that's one important tool that you'll use regularly for any kind of shape that's similar to that. One more vital tool is going to be, well, first let me show you. So if we want to create something like a, a path that follows a certain line through a landscape, you can create the line first, like this, any, any line will do. And then if we go to the front view, then we'll maybe create some sort of if it's a path, then it might look like this, with kind of a curb on the side or something. Okay, so we'll just pretend like that's the profile of our path. So, in this example, this is the path of the sweep that we're going to create. The modifier I'm going to show you is called a sweep, and this is the profile of that sweep. So if you take this spline, which is our path, and put a sweep modifier on it, I have a button for it here. If you want to find it up here, it's under the Modify tab, Modifier List, go to Sweep. Sweep. Now it gives you some, some kind of built-in preset shapes that you can sweep along there. Let's go to an isometric view so we can see it, or orthographic view. Um, that's just, so that's making a cylinder or a circle follow all the way along that path. I, however, want to use a custom section. 
and then you can go to pick and say pick my little sidewalk here and there you go you've made a little path it's kind of reversed there a little bit fix that by flipping the normals over just like that there we go okay so that's the sweep modifier another very important modifier when you're creating buildings or architectural visualization of any kind and really modeling all sorts of different things sweep is really handy the final modifier I want to show you one more time because I've already showed you before is extrude because you will use that over and over again remember that and why is everything coming out backwards here let's reverse that spline so you can see it right um, okay so if you extrude with an open spline and by open I mean it's not fully enclosed because there's an opening here these two are not connected so you see if you extrude like that then they'll it'll it won't be a solid object it'll be more like several planes that are connecting to each other um, however if you go into the sub object mode of the spline and use the connect tool click there and there Oops click and drag from one to the other. Those will be connected and they'll be nice and tight and welded together. And then you extrude and you have a solid object. So there you have it. So that's some of the ways we use splines to create various different types of objects. Now think about all the different modeling tools I've showed you so far and we'll learn more. But think about those and think about how they would apply to creating specific items that you might want to visualize. Because you'll use all these different tools in conjunction with each other to create... I mean, if you use all these tools together, you can pretty much create anything you can imagine in 3D.